And Jonathan, since you're our guest tonight, I'll let you go first. What was your reaction to seeing that finish live? Kyle Larson just getting the edge at Kansas Speedway last night. Well, I thought Busher got the edge when I first saw it. it. It was just one of those finishes where you just couldn't tell who won. I mean, even like when you got the close-up shot, you could kind of see it one way, you know, that was Busher, maybe one way it was Larson, but then they went to that more detailed camera look and – I mean, it was Kyle Larson. I mean, what a race, like from top to bottom, just, you know, stage one, that great battle. Stage three had some really interesting strategies involved. Stage two was entertaining as well. Just, I mean, what more could you ask for, really? Yeah, first of all, Jonathan, just want to thank you for uh, joining uh, Grid Encore tonight. We we do love our guests, Ben and I. So thanks for coming into our side of the, side of the place here on Monday nights. Uh, yeah, I saw the same as you. Chris Busher looked like he had the the edge there from the a broadcast camera, but um, as it went along, though, and they they get that official Kentucky Derby style, isn't it fitting the same weekend as the the by the nose and the nose at the 150th Kentucky Derby that we get another horse race of our own here at Kansas Speedway, and just by mm, just 0. 0.001 seconds, Busher is just astounded as he let Kyle Larson go around on the outside. And I hope Joseph Newgarden and company are taking a look at that and uh, realizing that, that he's not a guy you want to let on the outside come the end of, end of May. Yeah, even at Indy. Even at Indy, it's going to be tough. Well, I saw our friend Alex, who was at the race uh, last night, actually tweeted that Kyle Larson beat the car number that he will be driving later this month at the Indianapolis 500. So uh, wouldn't it be something if he can take the number 17 to victory lane uh, at IMS here in just a few weeks' time? But uh, maybe a little bit of foreshadowing for the 500 later this month. But uh, I'm in complete agreement with both of you guys. I mean, I just absolutely continue to be amazed. I uh, caught some of Dave Moody's Sirius XM Speedway show on my drive home uh, this evening, and he was talking about how, you know, it's easy to get greedy when we're in a situation like this. We've been so spoiled with photo finishes, two of the four closest in the history of the Cup Series, and then... A finish in Xfinity, but tied the old record to one thousandths of a second with uh, Sam Mayer and Ryan Sieg uh, last month. And, uh, you know, just to get all of those in such a close uh, time span here uh, to start out 2024, it's really remarkable. And uh, we've, we've been truly spoiled, I think, with a number of great finishes that we've seen here. Yeah, especially when you consider like, you know, the Cup Series didn't really have too many photo finishes prior to this year. I mean, it was kind of sparse and... Then we go out and get two of the closest, you know, in in history. You know, it, it's really been interesting. Yeah, Crit criticize what you will about the the new generations of car after car, but there's there's something about this one that uh, I'm not sure what the secret sauce is. But coming to places like this, it seems to have uh, the excitement factor, at least at least for for going it to Atlanta and and breaking the record, and then coming here and breaking it yet again. There there is just something wildly different about this year uh, with with this gen 7 car the next gen i know it's already had a couple of years to iron out some kinks but this seems to be where it's starting to at least for some people's opinion starting to hit a really high note yeah yeah and especially i mean i just think back to when kyle Lars was talking about how like with a 670 horsepower and the four inch spoiler like you get looser when you're out in front and it must be just creating that racing that just draws them back, draws them back. It's really interesting. Now, well, good point uh, from Joe here in the chat. Ford ended up uh, being the on, the on the losing end of all these photo finishes here in second place. And at the 2003 race at Darlington where Ricky Craven uh, beat Kurt Busch. So speaking of Darlington, we're coming back to that track this weekend. What do you guys think the chances are that we see a finish similar to 21 years ago with Craven and Bush coming to the line? I feel like it's not as likely at a place like Darlington. I think oh, the old lady in black still has her charm and she still knows how to keep a, keep the drivers in single file lines and dealing with more with the track than they are with each other. I think it's still going to be a, a game of cat and mouse and by, by seconds, kind of more of what we saw at Dover, but with that, that extra Darlington touch. But I would love to be proven wrong and see some beating and banging there at the line. I, you got to know those, cam those official NASCAR cameras – they're going to be extra tuned and ready for whatever else comes this season, especially at a place like Darlington. Yeah, I I do not doubt anything, especially with how the Expandy Series has run there. Just some of the wild finishes they had. I mean, last year with Larson and John Hunter Nemechek, and uh, yeah, I, I do not doubt anything. That that I mean, that's why 
fans continue to watch NASCAR every single week. You just don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, Ben, you mentioned uh, in the chat, yet yet another NASCAR NASCAR can't miss this year. Yet another NASCAR win uh, <laughs> compared to uh, – in light of everything else in 2024 in the motorsports landscape, NASCAR just is getting their way with it, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, it's unfortunate. We've talked on, on this show a little bit. We've talked certainly on Grid Tonight, but uh, IndyCar, you know, a lot of things on the business side not going so well with TV ratings and uh, there are potential charter negotiations and Honda, you know, questions up in the air about their future. Who knows what's going to happen? As good as the racing is, uh, not as many people are tuning into it. And then obviously Formula One's just kind of been the Max Verstappen show over the last couple of years now. Although credit where it's due, we did get a great uh, race in Miami yesterday with uh, Lando Norris finally taking his first win. I have to tell you guys, I, I think I, I have to self-impose a ban on watching any more F1 races this year. Because the two races I haven't watched a single lap of have been the two races that have been non-Max Verstappen Red Bull victories here. So I guess I'm just the, the bad luck charm or the good luck charm if you're a Max Verstappen fan. But I think for... All of us neutral fans here, we we certainly want to see a little bit more parity uh, on the top step of that podium. So credit where it's due to McLaren and, and Lando yesterday. But uh, in terms of the on-track product and the excitement and the number of things we've had to talk about, I think, like I said in the chat, NASCAR is undefeated this year. There's been so many good storylines and so much positive momentum uh, this year. And uh, this was certainly no exception here. You mentioned Sirius XM. Jack Arud actually got to fill in for Dave Moody last week. Um actually before this Kansas weekend and a caller called up and asked him about um, the, the, the issues with Ford and was really concerned. Like when, when do you personally hit the panic button for not no wins in the top three series so far this year? And Jack was, he was really optimistic about it. He was like, I would pump the brakes. I would wait till he said till Memorial day weekend, I would wait yeah. till the Coke 600. And I was like, really? Because yeah. On my personal panic button for Ford Motor Company, it's already been a couple of weeks ago. I've already been, I've already been really antsy about that and thinking, all right, this, not even Cole Custer in the Xfinity Series, like what, what's going on? Why, why can I, why can they not get this done? Yeah, which is wild to consider because, uh, you know, Ford won all three championships last year. Ben Rhodes, of course, and uh, you know, Cole Custer and Ryan Blaney. So I mean, to go winless through. First 12 weeks. It's bizarre. 